Tag team back again, checking the records. Let's begin, Bradley. We're so back. It. It's Brad's been a while. Back. It's been a while. That's right. It has been not very long because we're back with the second key <laughs> of our book. <laughs> been a long time for me. At least. It's been a while for you. I'm glad to have you back. How yeah, you been? Good. good to be back. Um, I'm good. 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 Got a lot going on. Got a baby coming in a couple weeks. You do. Yes, I've been preparing for that. Male or female? Female. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. You you a little name? baby girl. We're leaning towards Harper. You heard it here Harper. first. Harper. After Harper Lee. Oh, nice. To kill a awesome. Yes, book. I know. Yes. Cool. All right. Well, let's jump right in. We Sweet. are um, discussing first break all the rules, or as some people call it, back <laughs> to um, first break all the rules. That's what I I saw that in an email. Uh, just uh, F A F B A T R, yeah. and I was like, what is this? Um, but it's that's, not a very fluid acronym. <laughs> Uh, anyway, <laughs> so the second key, if you are following along, is define right outcomes. Yep. And the main question that we're going to tackle today and talk about is how you can get people to do what you want them to do when you're not looking yeah. <laughs> or when you're not around. Um, and that, that is a huge issue with, with management. Um, I don't know. Have you found that? To be a to be true that's that's an that's a hard issue to, to tackle. yeah yeah it's hard and it's like the main job of management in a lot mm -hmm. of ways um and i think what makes and parenting and, and by parenting the, by the way yeah. Yeah. which is impossible i just throw that one away I, <laughs> <laughs> i've learned there's that, no that, good book on parenting is there uh, there's no way to parent but yeah. I, I can figure out leadership and management which is a, a good plus for all of you listening yeah yeah no it's totally one of the most difficult things and i think a because it's built on trust. So if, if I, I can't be in nine different cities at the same time, so I have to trust the leaders and the managers in my store to be able to execute the vision that you have and that we have as a company mm -hmm. and to live up to the values that we have. And in order to get to trust, you have to know your people. Mm -hmm. In order to get to know your people, you have to do a lot of work to understand who they are, what motivates them, and, and what gets them ticking. Yeah, so. which, which plays right into what we're talking about today in being able to bring in um, the people that work under you in a way that they feel ownership and they feel valued, they feel cared for, and they feel like they want to do a good job for you, for the company. Yeah. Um, and so to start with, I, I, wanna, I wanna bring us to Maslow's hierarchy of need. I think this really works together well. And I thought of this as I read this chapter. Let me just basically run you through Maslow's hierarchy of needs. The first right. basic need that everyone has is physiological needs. So this is the needs that have to be met, food, water, rest, those type of things. Yep. Um, and then the second one is safety needs, security, safety. We all want that. Um, and as we grow um, in the more physiological needs, belongingness and love, um, which intimate relationships, friends, the next one, the fourth need is esteem needs, prestige and feeling accomplishment. Mm -hmm. And that is affirmation. And when we're giving affirmation correctly, um, our team is going to start feeling that. And then the final kind of uh, need that is is met when we go through and we excel through these first four is self-actualization achieving one's full potential so this mm -hmm. is when you feel like you are being fully you or you're you are really becoming the version of yourself that you want to become uh, yeah. and you feel like you're you're hitting um, the ground running and life with all cylinders working so in, in that we're talking here about employee satisfaction and in order to get to that point we have to kind of move through those needs yeah. and there's certain things that we have to do so in the chapter, they talk about how you, you focus on your team's uh, performance, uh, toward performance, and uh, building from last section, uh, last week with uh, when we just, Adam and I discussed this, we were talking about how when you're, when you're building towards performance, you're always looking at positives and looking at their strengths yeah. um, and looking at end goals of how to develop them and what you can develop and what you can't and yeah. where their talents are the where talent they aren't. conversation. Yeah, those type of things. So um, in the end, um, we're, we're, trying to, we're trying to standardize certain things and we're trying to build a structure, a culture where they feel like they have some liberty. Where, where do you feel... Um, how do you how do you balance those two things? You have standardized systems that have to be in place, and then you have this over here where you're trying to make them feel like they have ownership. How do you balance those two things? Yeah, 
you know, for me, what's interesting is, is where I've grown maybe the most in the last year is getting comfortable seizing control of certain moments and not being afraid to let a person who's, who's working under me fail. Hmm. And so I think a huge part of being able to be autonomous and take ownership of, of what you're doing is you, in order to learn, you kind of have to screw some stuff up. Um, and I think my natural reaction is to try and jump in and control the situation and try and maybe fix it before there's even a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, but you, when you do that, when that's sort of your instinct, you lose the ability to sort of see how people can come to creative solutions on their own. Um, I was interviewing, uh, training somebody how to interview recently, um, assistant manager with our company. And we, before the interview started, I, she had done some interviews before, but not with me. And I was like, here's how I want to approach it. I'm going to, I want to run the first one. I just want you to watch and take notes. Just listen to the questions I'm asking. If you don't understand why I asked something, wait till the interview's over and we'll talk about it and let's, let's go from there. And so we have a conversation, frame the whole thing. Interview comes in. I start asking questions and within like two minutes she jumps in and asks a question and like completely not what we talked about at all and and I was like that's one it's interesting it's funny a little bit um and normally I would have like I would have jumped in and just like asked another question and taking control of the situation um in this situation I sort of let it play out it could one it was a good question Hmm. like she was she was thinking on the right level where she needed to be yeah by the end of the interview, we're doing in breakout, and so some of you might be with Vinaigrette or Orange Leaf who are watching this, but a breakout, we have a question about if something breaks in the room, you don't have enough time to fix it, what do you do? That question is designed to see, do you focus on the details too much of the room and the mechanics, or do you immediately start trying to solve the, uh, the problem from a customer's perspective? And we, we ask that question, and the person's really struggling with it which is good. I love watching people struggle with that question because I want to see where they land. Mm-hmm. And before, before he's done struggling with it, she jumps in and answers, provides the framework for him to answer how he should answer it if mm-hmm. he answers it well. So we interviews done, whatever. Afterwards, we're, we're talking. There's a couple of things going on here that I value the situation on. I, I was like, hey, listen, this is, I delivered this funny that in the context of it, but I was like, if I ask you to do something, don't completely ignore what I ask you to do. But what, by me allowing her to make that sort of mistake, I saw a couple of things. One, she asked, she, she's thinking about things on the right level, but two, had I jumped in and just fixed it immediately and sort of pushed her out of it completely, I wouldn't have seen that like, hey, wait a minute, why is she jumping in here? Mm-hmm. Like you have to take, if somebody does something that they didn't do well, then I think the other thing I've learned is you ask why. Mm-hmm. Why, why did she jump in? Was it not clear enough? Well, it was pretty clear. She jumped in because she really wanted me to know that she like, it can step up to the plate and do this, yeah. which is something I wouldn't have learned otherwise, and which kind of gives me confidence actually. It's like, she really cares what I think. Mm-hmm. Like, and she cares about doing this job well and wants to show me she can do a good job. And so I think previously I would have just squashed the opportunity to see those things. So two things I hear you saying. One is that in order to balance those two, one, you have to be okay with failure. Mm -hmm. And two, um, and they talk about this part in the book, is that there's not one best way to do something. Yeah, no. So the standard is is really good um, for, and we have to have standards, like resetting a room has to be the, the same, same way. way. Yeah, you have to make the, sa- the salad the same way that, you know, every time, unless they're uh, telling you that they, they want to mix and match and those type of things. But you have to have standards, yeah. but at the end of the day, the best part of being able to lead is saying, here's the standard in a big picture way, mm-hmm but there's not one best way to get yeah. there. And as leaders, what do we want to do? We want them to do it exactly yeah. the way that yep. we do it. I yep. know I have that issue yep. too. I For want sure. to say, well, For you're sure. not doing it my way, so therefore it, it's probably not the right way. Yep. And, and I deal with that a lot. I, I saw this quote or heard this quote the other day that I think works really well. It's from General Patton. He says, um, don't tell people how to do things, tell them what to do and let them surprise you with their results. And I think that's what we're getting at, is not telling them exactly how to do everything, but telling them the big picture, telling them the end result, the standard that we have to meet. And this is what we talk about when we're talking about creating yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think being able to just trust somebody to do that is a humanizing act. You know, our culture, we talk talk about allowing people to flourish. Well, you, it makes no sense. If I have a manager who was in the Marine Corps for 20 years to 
to take the model and the, the way we talk and the way I push towards standards with him yep. is completely different than somebody who's 22 yep. and like hasn't gone to school, doesn't have like life experience. You just those conversations are different. Yep. And it would be dehumanizing to talk to one like a 22 year old and then talk to the other one like like a drill yeah. sergeant, yeah. you know. But but again, we have to be we have to be balanced because yep. there has to be standards. Yeah, you hit the standards. It's so, and that's within the context of the values. Yeah, and everybody has the same expectation. Yeah. I so, mean, I'm thinking of yeah. uh, our time back in Orange Leaf in Orange yeah. Leafville. I don't know if you. Also, I remember the, those these days. Stories, I, I remember but, these days well. Um, when we gave uh, a certain manager who was not with us very long, but um, uh, the leeway to be able to. Um, manage the store in the way that he wanted to and we came in and realized that he was changing the product he was changing yeah. the recipe and adding some pop tarts and some other things to the yogurt <laughs> uh, in ways that was like oh, we, we can't do that yeah. uh, but uh, it, there are there are a lot of other ways that you can shine and become um, and have ownership and yeah. move through these needs that you have of, of feeling valued and feeling like you can add to um, uh, being a part of work and, and not just that you come in like a robot or you're just in a system or cogging the wheel but you are like you said a human who is adding value to the workplace yeah. and that's that's a huge part so yeah and I would add and I talked with some managers today about this piece of it you've got to get that baseline right like ownership for an employee starts if they know what's basically expected of them mm -hmm. so the more clear you make the most fundamental task mm -hmm. the more ownership and they, the opportunity they have to do that well. Yep. That begins like very like, how do you deliver a good clue? Yep. Or like this needs to be cleaned this way. Well, here's the other thing that I think is missed is that a lot of people want to jump to the ownership part and feel like they can add a lot of things, yeah. but they're not getting the standards right. Yeah. What we've always said is you can't really be creative in a job as an employee on a team unless you are getting the basics right. Yes. Once you get the basics yep. right, then creativity can happen, but you have to be able to hit these yeah. these basic standards. So the interesting thing with this chapter and with this second key to finding the right outcomes is that it immediately, it has an immediate application for how customer satisfaction happens mm -hmm. within all of our interactions with the, the guests that come through the door. And they go through four basic levels that customers are looking for. And I wanna go through those really yeah, quick. Uh, level one is accuracy. This is the most basic level. When you pay for something, you wanna get what you pay for, yeah. right? It's, number two is availability, easy access. I wanna be able to jump on and pay for that. I wanna be able to make sure that the store is somewhere that I can pull up on Google Maps and it actually yeah. works and you don't get lost and those type of things. But these two, as they know, only prevent dissatisfaction. So that is a basic standard that we say, probably not someone that's gonna give a, a five-star review, but someone who's gonna leave and be happy, but not overly happy. It's not until you get to the level three and four that you really start penetrating um, the, the deeper emotions and feelings of people yeah. and their satisfaction and the customers that come through the door. Number three is partnership. Um, people want to be listened to and heard. They want to feel like they're on the same team when they come through the door. Mm -hmm. And that we talk about this, you are an agent and yeah. you are helping them feel like they are part of, of your team. And then level four is advice. You're the expert. So when they come through the door, whether they're buying yogurt, salads, a game experience, you're the expert in that field. And so they want to be able to call or talk to you and they want you to be able to, to guide them. And so those four levels uh, are exactly what we're trying to achieve with every customer. And how do we achieve this? We achieve this by doing this exact same thing with all of our team yeah. and making them feel yeah. in the exact same way, like here's the outcome, here's the things that we want you to feel whenever you are working. Yeah, yeah, and I think you can't emphasize much that step from level three into four is another sort of trust element happening mm. because at level three, you didn't just listen, you didn't just empathize, you were able to do something active. From partnership like that. to advice. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so you, you're able to build something for somebody and they come back and they trust you now hmm. in order to do that again for them. Hmm. So, you know. well, that is uh, the second key to finding the right outcomes. What I'd love to hear from you in the comment section is how you tend to try to balance both standards and this creating yes and the flexibility of letting people be themselves with their own personalities coming out and give us some feedback on how you do that and help us understand better how to do that ourselves and yeah. as a company we'd love to hear your thoughts